The Browns are said to have an improved season after acquiring Baker Mayfield first overall in the draft and also by getting Tyrod Tyrod Taylor from the Bills. Multiple sources at UCLA Sport Broadcasting Camp say that the Browns will win four to five games in the, the regular season. Till the and I'm Jack Brooks, UCLA Sport Broadcasting Camp. I'm Noah Goldsmith reporting live from Staples Center. Tonight, LeBron will make his Lakers debut as they face their crosstown rival, the Los Angeles Clippers. Last season, LeBron led the Cavaliers to the finals where they lost to the Golden State Warriors uh, uh, in, four, in four games. Um, LeBron signed a four-year, $154 million deal with the Lakers as a free agent this offseason, and he's looking forward to having a great few years with the Lakers. From Stable Center, I'm Noah Goldsmith reporting live. Brad Pacman from the Target Center. I have some bad news for Timberwolves fans. Per Adrian Wojnarowski, Derrick Rose has torn his tibia once again. This is unneeded news for Timberwolves fan after Carl Anthony Downs tore his ACL and is out for the season. Brad Pacman, ESPN reporter from Target Center, the Target Center. I'm outside Rams training camp at UC Irvine, where according to an inside source reporting to Alden Gonzalez of ESPN.com, Rams quarterback Akib Talib has torn Brandon Cooks' jewelry chain off of his body. This is very similar to last year when Akib Talib did the same exact thing to Michael Crabtree of the now Raiders in a game last season. For Barstool Sports, I'm Eli Pearl. The New York Giants are coming off a 3-13 year last year and are hoping to get back on the right foot by getting a win against the Jacksonville Jaguars this today. It won't be that easy, although, because the Jacksonville Jaguars are coming off an AFC Championship loss against the New, York, New England Patriots and almost got there, and they're looking this year to get over the hump and win the Super Bowl. This is a huge test for the New York Giants, and let's see if they can do it. Reporting live from MetLife Stadium, Jack Jassy, Sports Broadcasting Camp. The race for the NLS is getting tighter and tighter, with the Dodgers a half game up on the Diamondbacks and two and a half games up on the Rockies. A lot of tough matchups are coming up, with the Dodgers beating the Rockies for a four-game set starting on Thursday, and the pivotal matchups against teams like the A's, Phillies, Astros, and many, many more. For Live from Dodger Stadium, I'm Sammy Bovitz, ESPN. Last year, the Browns had an absolutely terrible season, going 0-16. This year, the Browns can't possibly be worse, especially with first overall pick in the draft, Baker Mayfield, and running back Carlos Hyde and veteran wide receiver Jarvis Landry. The Browns look to start off their season with a win against the Pittsburgh Steelers. I'm Ari Moore, reporting to you live from First Energy Stadium. This week, the Los Angeles Rams will be taking on the Baltimore Ravens in their first preseason game. This means that new Rams cornerback, Akeem Tlaib, will be taking on new Ravens wide receiver, Michael Crabtree, after their previous beef with the Broncos and Oakland Raiders. This has been Spencer McClellan from NBC Sports. We'll see you on the field. This week in Miami, the Washington Wizards will be hosting an informal training camp to prepare for the upcoming NBA season. This camp was organized by John Wall and will help new acquisitions such as Jeff Green, Dwight Howard, and Austin Rivers get acclimated to the new team. I, we can only hope that this will prepare for the Wizards uh, to have a better season than the year before as they finished as the eighth seed and were eliminated in six games by the Toronto Raptors. This has been Teo Schmidt reporting for ESPN outside of the American Airlines Arena. The Browns were 0-16 uh, last season, and they're looking to bounce back with Jarvis Landry and Tyrod Taylor and Baker Mayfield. Baker Mayfield's a rookie. They probably won't rely on him that much. And they traded Corey Coleman, which he didn't do much last year. And then I think they're going to win five games this season. I'm, I'm Alex Baum. I'm live from Cleveland. Hi. This is Eli Gardenshorts, and I'm reporting at Broncos Stadium at Mile High, where the Broncos are taking on the Seahawks in an exciting Week 1 matchup. It's very noisy out here, and I think the noisy crowd and the high altitude could be an X factor in this game, as the Broncos and Seahawks are looking very similar, as both have lost key pieces in their secondary over the last few years. These honestly have very similar teams, aside from one thing. I say the Seahawks have a better quarterback, and the Broncos have a slightly better run game and a way better wide receiver core, and a slightly better defense. I think honestly the Broncos can take this game here, and they're looking 
decent. I think they could go 8-8 eight and eight this season. Bradley Chubb, he's definitely going to be a big factor in this game, putting on some great pressure. Also, Broncos rookie Cortland Sutton at training camp has been making crazy catches and surprising all sorts of fans and critics alike. He's been putting on a show. Case Keenum also has been outperforming what people thought he would, and he's looking like he did himself last year. This year's Broncos are looking like last year's Vikings, except with not as good no line. Thank you. This is Eli Gardenshort signing out. Today, the New York Giants will be battling the Jacksonville Jaguars in week one of the 2018 NFL season. Rookie running back Saquon Barkley in his first ever game will be going against the best defense in the NFL. Will the Giants, with their new electrifying running back, be able to pull away the victory against the toughest defense? Reporting live from Everbank Field, I'm Leo Warnov, NBC Sports. The National League races are just getting tighter and tighter with the Philadelphia Phillies a game and a half ahead of the Braves in the East and the Los Angeles Dodgers only half a game back of the D-backs in the West. And don't forget about the Brewers who are only two and a half games back of the Cubs in the Central and are giving them a run for, the, for their money winning their division. Live from sunny Los Angeles, California, I'm Peyton Spinner, ESPN. I'm Gavin Wetzel reporting to you live from Staples Center. After a subpar season last year, the LA Lakers made the biggest signing this offseason by signing LeBron James. In the span of one offseason, they have vaulted from out of the playoffs to in the, the championship conversation. With a young core around him, the Lakers are primed to have a really good season this year. The, as the young core keeps improving and getting better, LeBron will lead this team. Many people think the Warriors are the favorites this year, but the Lakers could surprise some people. I'm Gavin Wetzel, reporting to you live from Staples Center, ESPN. Hi, my name is Russell Taylor, reporting live from Coors Field. The Colorado Rockies are two and a half games behind the Dodgers in the NL West, and they are two and a half games behind in the wild card game for the NL. The Colorado Rockies have the second best starting rotation when it comes to ERA behind the Red Sox. However, their bullpen has yet to, has yet to succeed. Wade Davis has given up two walk-offs in the last 10 games and has blown five saves almost the entire year. And the bullpen has just yet to do anything for them. Reporting live from Coors Field, my name is Russell Tabor. Hello, I'm Drew Jose Nixon here at Ricky Henderson Field as the A's get ready to play the Dodgers tonight. The A's are one of the hottest teams in baseball, but yesterday they lost to the Dodgers, which allowed both the Astros and the Yankees to gain a game on them, which is hard because they're both missing key players, and this was going to be the time for the A's to gain a couple games on them. Where are you? Live? I'm live at Ricky Henderson Field, Drew Jose Nixon. Hi, I'm Seth Golevsky, reporting live from Rogers Center in Toronto, where the Boston Red Sox have just beaten the Toronto Blue Jays in extra innings 10-7. This increases the lead to 8.5 games over the New York Yankees, which means the AL East is all but wrapped up for the Red Sox. Wow. I'm Seth Golevsky, live from Rogers Center in Toronto for ESPN. Hi, I'm Ben Averbrook, reporting live from Bank of America Field in Minneapolis, Minnesota, where we will see this week one matchup between the San Francisco 49ers and the Minnesota Vikings. We will see the return of Dalvin Cook, who had a great first game against the New Orleans Saints last season, but unfortunately got hurt in his later that season. We also see if Jimmy Garoppolo can keep de dominating defenses. La since last season, he won his first five games with the San Francisco 49ers. I'm Ben Averbrook, reporting live from Bank of America Field. Thanks, Chris. I'm live here in Toronto where the Red Sox have just won their 80th game. And because the Yankees are still in extras, we don't know if they're going to stay at nine games or if they're going to go up ten games above the Yankees. Because the Yankees have been losing recently, who we 95% know who's going to be winning this division. And if the Yankees continue to lose, their wild card position could possibly be in jeopardy. I am James Myers from the New England Sports Network. Hi, I'm Aaron Kinsley, reporting to you live from Dodgers Stadium, where the Los Angeles Dodgers play the Boston Red Sox. The Dodgers are coming off a win against the Diamondbacks, and they are now atop their division in the NL West. Meanwhile, the Boston Red Sox are the best team in baseball and look to strike against Walker Buehler early, the Dodgers' starting pitcher. I'm Aaron Kinsley, reporting to you live from Dodger Stadium. Hi. I'm Jack Dotson, reporting live from Staples Center. 
I just talked to Los Angeles Kings captain Andre Kopitar, and he says that signing Kovalchuk was a great move by the Kings. He's a great addition on the ice, and it's bonding well with the players. I'm Jack Dodson, live from SBC. Hi, I'm Charlie Lanza. I'm here at the PGA Championship. Justin Thomas won last year. Can you win again? Um, whoever wins this gets 500 points, and it's also the 100th year of the PGA Championship. I'm reporting. I'm Charlie Lansbaum, reporting from the Golf Channel. I'm Adam Krasilovsky, reporting live from City Field. Noah Syndergaard went 6.1 strong earlier today against the Cincinnati Reds. He got six strikeouts during the game. It was not his best outing, but he went and got the job done. The Mets ended up with a 6-4 win and hope to get the same outcome tomorrow. Thanks. Reporting live from City Field, I'm Adam Krasilovsky from ESPN. Hi, Jake Spall here, reporting live from the U.S. Memorial Coliseum. I just talked to head coach Clay Hilton about the, the USC's quarterback situation this year. He says quarterback J.J. Daniels has had a great start at spring practice this year, and he hopes we'll get some value, valuable playing time next season. This is Jake Spall reporting live from the U.S. Memorial Coliseum with ESPN. This is Ryan Mendiola reporting live from Oakland Coliseum. The Dodgers are playing the A's today after their one-day break from playing 17 straight. On the mound for the Dodgers is Rich Hill, and the starting pitcher for the A's is Sean Minet. The Dodgers are playing after a series loss against the Astros, and the A's have won six straight. This is Ryan Vindio reporting live from Oakland Coliseum. I'm Max Baker at the L.A. Coliseum, where the L.A. Rams are playing the Oakland Raiders for their first home preseason game. We're getting a first look at the new Rams, featuring the Nadamakan Sue, Akib Talib, and Brandon Cooks. We're seeing if the Rams are better this season or worse, and hoping they can make a strong playoff run this season. F from the LA Coliseum, I'm Max Baker. I'm Alex Swift outside San Siro Stadium, where Lionel Messi was just transferred to AC Milan. After Ronaldo went to Juventus, and FC Barcelona was able to get Arturo Vidal, they no longer needed to spend money on Lionel Messi to clear up um, some space. So they, was, so they were able to get um, Messi to AC Milan. Live from San Siro Stadium, I'm Alex Swift. Hi, I'm Sam Fermanac, and I'm here at Broncos training camp. So far, I've noticed that the Broncos have made huge strides offensively from their team last year and the year before. Newly acquired Vikings quarterback Case Keenum has really improved this offense, and including showing out new receivers like Cortland Sutton and Deshaun Ham Hamilton. Case and the receivers have been putting on a show, as well as the running backs, and there's been a wide-open competition between third-year man Devontae Booker, third-round pick uh, Royce Freeman, and undrafted free agent uh, Philip Lindsay. And both these, all three of these running backs have showed huge strides. Booker more of a receiving agile running back, whereas Royce Freeman is more of a power back. And Lindsay has shown really good strides at blocking and on special teams. I'm Sam Fermanek, reporting from Broncos Training Camp. I'll see you next time. Hi, Gino Carnius, live from Arkansas, California, where the Dallas Cowboys have been holding training camp. Earlier last week, Jerry Jones spoke on the national anthem policy, saying that all Cowboys players must stand. He was not the only Cowboy player to talk about the national anthem. Dak Prescott also mentioned that he will never protest the national anthem. I'm Gino Carnius, live from Arkansas, California. Hi, I'm Asai Johnson, coming from you live from the Lakers arena and we have LeBron James still working with his new crew uh, Lance Stevenson, JaVel McGee, Rajon Rondo and Michael Beasley. The team looks great already. They're working. Lonzo looks buff going at it in the gym and he's just doing great and Kyle Kuzma is still doing good and I feel like they have a great chance of doing great this season and yeah I guess that's it. Like, oh, okay, I'm Masai Johnson coming from you from ESPN. Hi, I'm Max Baker reporting live from inside the Los Angeles Coliseum where the LA Rams are playing the Oakland Raiders for their first home preseason game. We are getting a first look at the new Los Angeles Rams featuring Akib Talib, Nadama Kinsu, and Brandon Cooks. 
Everyone is very optimistic about the Rams' new season and hopes they can make a long playoff run. From the LA Coliseum, I'm Max Baker.